Hello, welcome to the Mad Batter channel. My name's Chris. If you find this video interesting and or useful, perhaps you'll consider giving it a like and possibly subscribing to the channel, which would be a great help. Many thanks. In my last video, I talked about the new portrait background removal tool and said I would do another video about removing the background from other than portraits. But before I do that, I thought it would be useful to do a short video to make sure everyone was up to speed and understood the two different types of masking in Luminar Neo, namely tool masking and layer masking. So here we are in Luminar Neo with this black and white image of a fence, which I use quite a lot as a background. Now, I, now in order to demonstrate the two types of masking, I'll add a layer, so we'll click on the plus, and double click on this colourful image, which is actually from Madeira, and we'll increase to 100% opacity. Now, as I say, there are two types of masking. The first is tool masking, which you'll find in any of the tools. So, for instance, black and white, I can make an adjustment and then I can mask it. And then there's layer masking, which is under layer properties masking. Now with layer properties, we've got five types, brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, mask AI, and portrait background removal, which of course only works on portraits. But in the tools, we've got only the four, brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, and mask AI. There's no portrait background removal naturally enough because that's nothing to do with an individual tool. So, to demonstrate tool masking, I'll click on the adjustments and convert the image to black and white. Now initially it applies to the whole image of course, but then we can go in and mask it. So for instance, I could get a brush and I need to erase. And then when I erase the tool effects, you'll see I get back to the color image of the top layer. And then I can press X with the latest update to Luminar Neo to switch to paint. And then I can paint back the black and white effect if I want to. And let's go back to Erase by pressing X. And I get the colour back, press X again. But this time I'll reduce the strength to roughly 50% and when I paint it back you'll see it only brings back half the black and white effect. So using tool masking you can remove the effect of a tool in any part of the image and you can remove it 100% or any lesser percent that you want. But as you can see the actual image on the layer you're working on remains present. It's just that the effect you put on it is removed. I'll, I'll now reset the black and white tool by clicking on this arrow here so it's no longer having any effect. And now we'll go to layer properties and masking. Now when you when you use masking on layer properties you're not masking any effect you're masking the actual image in the layer you're working on. So for instance, if I choose a brush, press X to go to erase and then just paint across like that, you'll see that I'm actually removing the upper image layer. I should actually switch to 100% to make it clearer. So I can just paint over the image and you'll see the underlying layer shows through because I've actually masked or hidden the actual image in the upper layer. Of course, as we're dealing with masking, we can always paint back the image that we've hidden. So if we hit X again to go back to paint and then just paint back on, you'll see the image in the upper layer reappears again. So that is the fundamental difference between tool masking and layer masking. With layer masking, you remove some or all of the layer you're working on where with, whereas with tool masking, the image in the layer you're working on remains, 
but the effect of any tools you've used on that layer are removed as you mask out the tool effect. Hopefully that makes sense and it is of importance when we come to consider background removal other than portraits. Many thanks for watching and I hope this was useful.